Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here and I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, a while ago I did some PFSense videos and I did those in a VM and I wasn't super happy with the results of that and the opportunity came up for me to buy an actual PFSense appliance from NetGate. So that's what I did. So I want to show you this now. What I've got is I have uh, the smallest PFSense appliance that NetGate offers. Uh, I did buy this myself. They did not send this to me. So in the box you get a NetGate sticker. You get a getting started card. Say thank you for that. We have a power supply that is, uh, looks like it's five, five volts. And it is a barrel connector on the end. Then we have a mono price USB cable. I believe this is the, the console cable. We have four adhesive feet. And then we have the appliance itself. So you can see how little this is. And it tells us that the, to use a five volt power supply only on the package. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And here's the front of it. And you can see how small this thing really is. So you've got your power, you've got your USB, um, and then you've got your console. There's a power LED there as well. That's what the top of the unit looks like. And then here you have your LAN and WAN ports. Now to give you some idea of how big this is not, let's see. Here is a Microtik router board. This is the small one. This is the uh, five port, the hex. So this is a little, little guy here. But this is the size of the PFSense appliance compared to this. Um, let's see. Here's an Edge Router X SF, Edge Router X SFP, and you can see that I could get about three of these little guys inside one of the Edge Routers. So it's, it's small, and you can get a, a DIN, a DIN mount, uh, DIN rail mount for this, or you can get a wall mount. I did not get either of the uh, mounting options for this, but that's enough talk. Let's. Um, Let's go over to the computer and fire this up. This guy is going to make a, a great addition to the lab. We're going to do a lot of videos, push this thing to the limit. So let's head on over to the PC and, uh, and get started. All right, so we are over at the computer, and I don't know if I actually said the model. I think I said the smallest appliance, but this is the SG-1000. I put my feet on the bottom there. And another thing that I didn't notice, but on this card, it says if you do registration that you get PFSense Gold, and I, I'm not familiar yet with the levels of support, uh, but PFSense Gold includes access to the PFSense book, expert-led hangouts, and configuration backups. So that's something apparently that I can get because I purchased uh, an appliance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, I'm going to scan the, the docs and look for a quick start. You know, I've installed this on it, hardware, you know, PFSense, I've also installed it on a VM, but I've never had uh, one of the appliances shipped to me. So I just want to get a little bit more of an idea of what I'm doing. I have a feeling that I'm going to plug it in and just, we might kind of be up and going maybe, but I'm going to check out these quick start guides over here and uh, I'll be right back with you. So I've got to say that their documentation is actually pretty, it's 
organized pretty nice. So I went to the URL that's on the card, and I go to PFSense product manuals. I select the SG1000. It shows me a picture, and then we've got a PDF we can download of, or we can go to IO ports. It explains it, getting started, all this other stuff. So I went to getting started, and they want us to go ahead and register um, the appliance and activate it. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to show that process, but then it literally it walks you through it, even tells you how to plug the cables in and all kinds of things. So their documentation is very, very uh, complete. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this guy registered and then I'm going to get it plugged in and uh, we will be back once I have that done. All right, so it turns out that um, registering, used, you used to have to register to get all that stuff. Now you don't have to. It's, it is provided free of charge. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this guy um, plugged in and um, see what happens. All right, so I don't know how how much of this you're going to be able to see. I'm not I'm not shooting uh, where I've got uh, zoom uh, on a camera, uh, but right here is the NetGate appliance. So here's my ER4 that is the uh, daily driver right now, and then I've got a cable going from the WAN, which is the port on the right, to the ER4. And then I have my PC, which is the blue cable. It is plugged into the LAN. So as soon as I get a new IP address, we will uh, we'll get the show on the road here. All right, so my PC has a new IP, 1.100. And so what we did was uh, I opened a new tab, and I went to this. So we're going to walk through this here. We're going to add an exception. And so now we have the PFSense login. I'm going to zoom this guy in a little bit here so you all can see it. And let's see. Default username is admin password pf sense. Admin. So this is different for me to have uh, an actual, you know, pf sense appliance. I um, I really like this. All right. So first thing at the top Warning, the admin account password is set to the default value. Change the password in the user manager. So if I uh, click this link, it should take me to the user manager, or I can walk through this wizard, this setup wizard. So um, let's, let's see if we can open this in a new tab. So that comes up. So let's do this. Now, in a real deployment, I would not use um, admin. And we have privileges to everything. We're going to go ahead and click Save there. We could put authorized SSH keys in. That's fantastic. We could put certificates in. All right, so now that's changed. So we'll go back over here, and let's, let's run the wizard. Let's see what this wizard's all about. It talks about uh, NetGate Global Support. It's available 24-7. That's fantastic. You know, what's really nice about that is that you can get the, you know, the open source software and then you can get support. Like you can talk to somebody on the phone. It's, that's, that's good stuff. I'm, I'm sure you pay for it. I don't know what the pricing is, but I mean, at least the option exists. All right. So host name, we're going to call this PFSense Mini Domain. Primary DNS server. And I'm not going to fill a secondary in. Next on that. Time server. I always use ntp.uiuc.edu. Time zone. We could use UTC. I probably leave, leave that the way it is. All right, configure WAN interface on this screen. So, yeah, WAN right now, um, in this exercise, we're going to leave it as uh, DHCP. We could spoof the MAC if we wanted to. We can change the MTU. So if we were doing PPPOE, it says it right there, or even if we were hooking to something like a cradle point, um, a lot of times on those 5G routers, we have to change the MTU. And then you can also do 
um, M MSS clamping here. We could put a static IP address in with our uh, gateway, but we are DHCP. So we are going to leave all of this. Okay, uh, by default, block private networks from entering via the WAN, which means it will not accept inbound connections um, from the WAN. This option should generally be left turned on unless the WAN network lies in such a private address space. So we're going to uncheck that. Um, block non-internet routed networks from entering via the WAN. When set, this option blocks traffic from IP addresses that are reserved, but not RFC 1918 or not yet assigned. So, um, yeah, these prefixes should never appear in the Internet routing table, so we'll leave that. We're going to go ahead and leave LAN at 192.168.1.1 because I don't have any other networks in the house, in the lab, even in the workshop that have that. I, I typically stay away from that, but here it's already configured. We're going to go ahead and use it. Ah, so I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have had to change that uh, password. I got a, I got ahead of myself. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just set it to what I had it set, what I set it to earlier. Somebody should have stopped me. They should have told me I was gonna have to do that. All right. So click uh, reload to reload PFSense with the new changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click reload there. Reload is in process. The wizard will redirect to the next step once the reload is completed. All right, so congratulations. PFSense is now configured. We recommend that you check to see if there are any software updates available. Keeping your software up to date, absolutely. So we can click check for updates. And it is, I see it is, uh, it's cranking away here. It's thinking. Remember, we're here to help. Click here to learn about. Um, so system update. Let's see. I am not going to run uh, development. So we're going to see if there's any of the latest stable versions. Now, I just ordered this last week. And I don't know if there are any updates available from PFSense or not. But it looks like it's it's checking. So we'll see what happens here. All right, so it's been a few minutes, and it looks like it is still uh, retrieving. Now, what I don't know is if if this box, I mean, this is the, the, smallest, the smallest one they offer. So I don't know if it's a setting that I created or if it's um, just really taking this long. So uh, I'm going to let it run for a few more minutes, and... Uh, We'll be back. All right, so um, it, it took just a couple couple minutes, and you can see I'm on the latest version. Um, I'm going to probably at some point activate this PFSense Gold so that we can talk about that. But let's talk about the hardware in this guy real quick. It's an ARM Cortex A8, um, and it's got a built-in CPU crypto. It says it is inactive. It's been online for 11 minutes, um, and we have, uh, it says 493 megs, probably 512 is what it's, you know, how that whole thing goes, and then we're using 22% of 3.4 gig, so this, uh, I like this, that they are gigabit uh, interfaces, so we could pull up a speed test real quick and uh, see what this comes back at. All right, so we are uh, triple natted, but the uh, download speed came back at 130 megabits per second. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. We're really going to put this little box through its paces and use it for everything that we're doing, PFSense, as long as it can handle it. So I, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with this think I'm definitely going to be happy with this. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for much more PFSense content. It will be coming quickly now that I have this physical piece of hardware and we can slap it around and um, I got something special that I'm doing with that server that I was using for my VMs too. So that'll be coming. That'll probably be uh, December but uh, there'll be a lot more PFSense 
before that. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to h5llc.com. Fill out the contact form. If we can't help you, we'll get you to somebody who can. And if you uh, want to talk to us on Discord, the link's down there. People have been down there. People have been asking about Patreon, so we do have Patreon uh, set up now. The link is below. And if you want to buy any of the gear you see here on the channel, you can use the Amazon link down below. Once again, I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next video.